Welcome to the fittest podcast in Oakland, where your favorite coaches talk everything to help make you a better person inside and outside the gym. We're back with another great podcast for the fittest podcast in Oakland. This week, Ben and Robin solve your mobility problems. Yep, we do it. Because February's lifestyle focus is all about mobility, we solve them for you. So sit back, listen up, and learn that maybe the way you've been going about mobility isn't the way you need to be going about mobility work. Because that might not be your problem. All right, enough. Have fun, listen up, and learn lots on this week's episode of Mobility. Take care, gang. All right. I think we're talking now. So probably they heard me talk about airplane mode, which we are on airplane mode. That way, when Ben gets his favorite spam calls, he doesn't have to stop the podcast. That's really smart. You know, sometimes my brain works well. Yeah. So. We're in our mobile podcast unit today. That sounds like kind of weirdly creepy. Does it? Mobile mobile unit? It's mobile like unit. mobile, like your bookmobile or your <laughs> bloodmobile. It's our podcast mobile. Now I think of what is the, the, not Flanders, but the preacher from the Simpsons and their burning bookmobile. Oh no! <laughs> Don't burn books, people. Stop it. No, but I think that's us. We're, we're going to just burn a bunch of we're books just today. Burn. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pick all the ones. We, uh, let's pick all the mobility books and burn. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm not going down that rubble hole. I don't need any legal cease and desist. <laughs> but speaking of burning. Yes. Let's talk about alcohol because it burns sometimes. It burns. It burns. It burns you so many, t- so many ways. So if you haven't caught on or don't realize that it's the first of the month, We are now doing our February focus. So alcohol was the January focus. So we hope that in January you did something to focus on your relationship with alcohol. Something. Whatever it might be. So do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. So I do dry January. One, to check myself to make sure I can function without it. So I have successfully done it and I will make it to the weekend. So good. Two... I realized that I definitely have a stress response urge around alcohol. So Fridays and Saturdays, a routine is usually cracking a beer and relaxing. Mm -hmm. So that is still a thing. Definitely is a thing. Um, Definitely is an urge. I I will probably have to seek help around that because I don't know whether it's a good or a bad thing. I'm trying to figure it out. I think... I think it's a tool, but I need to think on it more. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it was, that urge was very, very prevalent in a couple of times this month. And so I'm like, is this something that I need to pull the trigger on a little more or pull the thread on? Um, so it was interesting for me. Uh, the good news is there's still enough self-control, discipline, you name the thing that I never did. So it's an interesting kind of conversation around myself of what does that look like and why. Um, And I don't think it, I think it's more, for me it's always how do I make this better? How do I get better? How do I be better? How do I perform better? Blah, blah, blah. So it's more unraveling that because that tool, while helpful, might not be the best tool. So it's it's more figuring those pieces and parts out. Mm -hmm. But I am happy that this weekend I will get to Empty out more of my convenience store, as my lovely fiance says. Um, <laughs> although that was a good note that she made the joke at me because my cabinet of drinks has been very much diminishing this month. She goes, yeah, because you're not buying a six pack and only drinking two of them. <laughs> so, yeah. So at, at least for me, my, my relationship is going better because I'm not drinking. <laughs> and it's it's more not, not the actual consumption of alcohol. It's the consumership around alcohol. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody can help me be better at 
places like Trader Joe's and just buy one beer instead of six, that'd be great. Yeah. Now, that's actually the theme for all my grocery store shopping, by the way. So whoever <laughs> wants to come sit on my shoulder while I walk through the grocery store and tell me, you don't need that. <laughs> Slap it out of your hand. And, and yes, it's on sale, but you don't need to buy it. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hard, right? I'm a sucker for a deal. The struggle is real. Yeah. Well, I love that you brought that up because I think we are talking about people who are laughing because it said January's um, lifestyle focus was alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what? You want us to drink more alcohol? And it's like, it was hard to write that because it's so multi-layered and we aren't telling anyone what to do about it. But what you did was what we, we want everybody to do is kind of look at it and what are you using it for? Um, is it an addition to your life? Is it pulling away from your life? All of those things. And it is really hard to do on your own. So not to get too deep because, you know, this is a <laughs> fitness podcast, but if you are questioning that at all, most likely it's probably not serving you in some way. It's just, just, if you, if you got to err on one side or the other, I would say err on the side of, if I'm even thinking about this, it's probably not where it should be. So continue in the next few months, even if you did dry January and you're like, I can't wait till February 1st to go back, you know, keep thinking about it. Keep revisiting that. Um, that's just in general. Me personally, I had a lot. I had, I did a lot this January and, um, I want to put a pin in it because I actually want to talk about this more in depth on another podcast. Perfect. The first Ben is hearing about this, but, um, <laughs> I decided I don't like dry January. I don't like challenges that have beginnings and ends. I like, I used to like them and I like them theoretically for some reasons, like as a jump start for a lot of people. Um, but in general, I think for, for instance, for example, if one, who will not be named, has a problem with alcohol, dry January is not going to do anything for you. It's just going to make you white knuckle for 31 days. And then you're right back where you started. So if you're that person, you might want to continue kind of looking at this and thinking about it. If it was just like, you know, I just wanted to see, I wanted to clear out my liver, give it a chance to rest, whatever. And you're just, you know, you have no prob problems with drinking, go for, go for it. But that's just kind of, I came to that determination without going too deep into what I drink, when I drink, if I'm going to drink, if I'm not. Um, I do want to talk about that again because it's, it's a whole podcast. And, but yeah, I, I'm thrilled with how my January went and not because of the dryness, just because of a lot of things I kind of figured out. Yeah. Not to be mysterious. No, that's beautiful. I actually think you gave everybody a really, really good tool there. Um, it's one of the things that I find challenging in the fitness industry. We love in the fitness industry, the six month challenge, the six week challenge, the 30 day challenge, um, whole 30 the dry January, the weight loss challenge, blah, blah, blah. You, you name it. We love it. 800 gram challenge. Yeah. Um, 75 hard. All of these we should actually do a podcast on. Yeah. Um, pen and we will do it pen later. Pen in that one too. Um, but what Robin just talked about is fundamentally why you do those things. It is to raise awareness around something. So it can be good for you. As Robin just showed, she grew an awareness on something and that's what's most important. The little be literally being able to do it for 30 days is not the important piece. For me, it's my gut check. It's can I do this for 30 days? Because if I can't, I know I have a massive problem and need to go fix it. Or if you can't without gritting and white knuckling mm -hmm. every single minute and can't wait till February 1st. If you're that person, again, no judgment, but think about it. Just think about it. <laughs> well, it's, it's not, it's like everything. It's like when we're going to talk mobility, like th us focusing on mobility for 30 days. Or if it's, if it's sugar or whatever yeah. it is that makes you go, I can't imagine my life without this thing. Think about it. Exactly. That's all. And it might mean, oh, cool. No, I need this thing, but now we need to create a relationship around it. And you use the word tool and it's just a lot of times if something's causing you harm and it's a great tool for you. You just need a different tool that does the same thing that does not cause you exactly. harm. It's that simple. It's not easy, but it's that simple. And this can be inversed into positives. Absolutely. Like 30-day challenge of getting to the gym consistently. Like all of those things 
can lead to better habits in the long term. Yeah. And that's that's what the challenge is trying to do. It's why we did a healthy habits challenge back in the day. Um, but I think what people forget is it's not it's not the duration, it's the longevity. Well, sustainability. that's why we stopped calling them challenges and started calling them focuses, right? Exactly. Right. All right. Well, on that note, what's our focus for February, sir? Mobility. Mobility, mo problems. No. Is that yes. wrong? No, that's right. <laughs> um, so a couple things here. One, we've we've had this for two years now. So if you haven't listened to last year's mobility podcast, I will link it in the notes. It does a really good job of, one, talking the definitions, which we will review, two, talking common problem areas and how to address them, mm-hmm. which we will kind of do here, but we're going to take a different spin on this year's podcast. And then three, it also gave you some tips and tricks to help you out. Yeah. So once you listen to this podcast, go listen to that one, because if you're like, oh, got it. They unlocked this for me. Now I can go back and listen to that one and figure out how to fix myself. Yeah, it's not. A, we're not repeating the same podcast, even though there'll be some overlap. So, yes. Yeah. So listen to both. And then the other thing was it became eye-opening to me when we did the AMA board when people were asking for mobility programs and things like that. I'm like, once again, Ben felt bad because he's like, the information we've given to you all, obviously we haven't educated you all, and that's that's our job. That's the the clicking and things that's the not just telling you it's two plus two but getting you to actually do two plus two yeah and that's one of the reasons we do the amas because we need to go okay now where do we go from here exactly let's keep, let's keep moving down the road let's not get caught up and think we've finished the journey exactly well and it's also why we have a continuous relationship with everyone yeah <laughs> it's, it's why every class you get coached every month you do a check-in or every quarter you do a check-in all of that is to continue that progress and develop and grow it not just one and done Okay. Because I wish it was one and done, but nothing ever is. I wish we had magic pills. When are we going to get those? We do. The problem is we don't take them. Oh, so... we're going to talk about some of them. <laughs> we're going to talk about some of them today. So... We're going to give you some magic pills, you guys. Stay tuned. Yeah. So don't ask me for the magic pill because I'll show you the <laughs> research study that proves that we still don't take the magic pill when we have it. I take all my gummy vitamins. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to avoid these. Mm. It's going to go into this hole. Because I have to be nice today because I was told I was mean Ben last yeah, podcast. Don't be mean. <laughs> you were. Nice. Right. Define mobility so, and flexibility. Let's start with definitions. Let's do um, it. So flexibility. I'm going to start there. Okay. This is somewhat out of the CrossFit level one. Um, also, you can find this in Webster's. Um, I'm just not letting Robin pull up Webster's today. Miriam. I, I wanted her to struffle, str- struggle today. Okay. Um, flexibility Re- uh, refers to the ability to flex or extend a joint through its fullest range of motion with assistance. Okay. So basically it's a passive pattern. In other terms, Ben comes up to your leg and pushes it in a certain path. Yeah. Or if you're sitting somewhere listening to this, take your index finger and you can pull it back. So with your other finger, pull it back. Yes. If you try to do it without, like try to pull your your fingertip to your wrist without your other hand and then try it with your other hand and see which one's further. You'll notice that there's a difference there. (laughs) Now, mobility is what Robin just did, but first... It's the ability to move a joint through its full range of motion with maximum levels of physical control, a.k.a. you can do it on your own. So what Robin was showing with her finger there, she can pull her finger back towards her wrist to a certain point in amount. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. So fundamentally, just think of it this way. Flexibility, what you can do passively with the joints and body parts. Um, Mobility is what you can do actively. With a friend. With a, no, without a friend. Oh, mobility is oh, without a friend. Mobility is without Flexibility is with a friend. Yep. Flex with your friends. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yep. So that's the importance there. Um, and then Robin wanted me to talk about this yesterday. I don't know if I put it on my board. Stability. Yeah, you did. Um, stability is being able to hold that position or be strong in that position or resist force in that position. And I used a word there with strength. It's also tied in there. So like this is when... You can lift your hand above your head, and now I give you a dumbbell to hold there. And you can hold it. 
So that's where you're able to stabilize that position. And we see that with other things of like, can you balance in the bottom of your squat? Mm -hmm. Can you hold yourself on one hand, right? Mm -hmm. And that stability there. Makes sense? Yeah, I love it. Cool. I mean, I this is very much oversimplifying, but I always say stability is the, the intersect between mobility and strength. Exactly. Right. That's exactly. That, that little Venn diagram. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. So next is, and on that list of definitions, is stretching. Yeah. So stretching. So think of your Hulk Hogan um, doll that you played with as a small child, and you would pull his arms as far as you could apart. You called it Hulk Hogan? It was Hulk Hogan. Ours was Stretch Armstrong. Yeah, they made a Hulk Hogan version oh, of it. Oh, got it, okay. You had to be into the, the WWF wrestling, WCW wrestling thing. Yes, and yes. a child in the 90s. Yes. I was having fun in the 90s. Yes. <laughs> okay, moving um, on. Stretch so, Armstrong. Uh, so stretching. Stretch Hulk Hogan. Stretching. Yeah. This is usually a passive movement where something is pulling you into a position. Yeah, sit on the floor, reach for your feet. Exactly. Stretching. There's not much activity to it. It is most likely static. Static means still. Right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's important. So that's holding those long positions. Like the band stretches we do would be mm. one. Yeah. And, and so when we think about that, that means there needs to be time there. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest with you all, none of us in a warm-up hold it long enough. I, I, I will set a clock for a minute, and half of the class will stop it at 35 <laughs> seconds. And I'm like... Right. That's okay. I mean, that's, it is what it is. So yeah. Stretching is takes a long time to make change. Exactly. A static stretch, you can make change, but it takes a long time. You guys sit in those positions quite a while. Think of yoga class. When you go to yoga class, you hold a position for a long duration. Mm -hmm. Now, there are flows and things like that, but that's when they shift into something a little bit different. And we'll talk that next. But that's that's what stretching is. Yep. It's longer duration, slower. And that's like your mobility wad and those kind of programs. They'll do a lot of those holds, those static stretches. Mm -hmm. All good for you. Yep. But, but there's more. There's more. All right. Activating. This is what you see us do a lot of times in the warm up is activations. So think about it when we are having you warm up, most of the time we're having you move. It's very few and far between that we have you hold a position, especially when it's freezing. <laughs> like everybody tells me the hamstring floss is a stretch. Get down to about 45 oh, oh, I'm sorry, my watch is talking to me, it's telling He's us lonely. the weather. He's lonely, um, but. Like, think about the hamstring floss. Most people say, oh, that's a stretch, man. Think about it, though. You never hold it very long in any one of those positions. You're constantly kind of moving and pulling on something. And your brain is waking up to that. Because you get a signal from it. Zing! Whoa, okay. So there's a stretch involved. <laughs> exactly. But then there's more. There's more. Yeah. And it's not being held. So we're adding layers onto that stretch. Yeah. yeah. Like, people will call it Samson stretch. And while you might hold a Samson stretch for a minute or two, most people do Samson stretches across the floor. Mm -hmm. So it's held for like three seconds. That in my terminology or my mindset is an activation. And and also you, you might call that dynamic. Exactly. So it's instead of holding a position like a Samson stretch, you're moving in and out of it dynamically. Exactly. So static means still, dynamic basically means moving. <clears throat> exactly. And it's to get the muscles or the joints firing and moving. Like I want those hamstrings primed. I want them ready to rock. I want them ready to perform. And there's different levels to activating, right? Like there's an activation where you hold an isometric squat, AKA I hand you a big heavy dumbbell and you sit in the bottom of it. That's gonna activate everything. Yep. <laughs> and then there's a slow controlled air squat. Same idea, probably a little bit easier sometimes, depending upon how warmed up you are. But that's how that all kind of works in my head mm -hmm. versus stretching versus activation. Cool? Yep. Lovely. There's one more on there. Yeah. Range of motion. Yes. So this is, think back to your geometry class of the protractor <laughs> or all of that. So every joint has a range of motion. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean an ability for 
that joint to move in a certain amount of area or degree. Degree. Yes, so, yep. so we have ball and socket joints, mm -hmm. which move in big circles. Yep. For the most part, they they might not be a full 360, um, the way then which some of them are designed, um, and that's also one due to structure, one due to um, tendon strength and things like that. And then there's another very famous joint, which is uh, a hinge joint. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where it opens and closes like a door. Mm -hmm. And no, I'm not talking about the hinge pattern about the hips. That's but, a different thing. Yeah, the hips are a ball and socket joint. Mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, And then the shoulders. And then your knees, uh, elbows, wrists, those are all hinge joints. For the, well, wrists. Uh, wrists is a circular joint. Yeah, they have a circular joint. Yeah, so forget wrists. But an elbow, open and close. Yep. A knee, those are hinge joints. The way I think about it, the closer to the center of your body, more ball and socket mm -hmm. joints. Yeah. The further away from your, your body, you start to move into hinge joints. That's elbow and knee. Like they're they're literally parallel. Look at wrists. It's a circular joint, but it's also something else that I'm forgetting. It's kind of a mix. Yeah, yeah I'm forgetting in my anatomy. There's other joints too, but we yeah. don't have to go through all the joints. And it's the same thing. Fingers. It's the body reflects itself a lot. It's yes, kind of cool. It is. Um, kind of. It's really cool. So just keep that in mind. Yes. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Let's get into it because we have. 20 minutes. I think we can do this. I think we can do this. We can do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to talk. This is where we're going to kind of deviate from that um, last post. And we're going to kind of get dig in a little bit more to some practical stuff where, yeah, um, that are maybe outside of what you would consider a mobility. Okay. But we're going to include it in this podcast. So really what we want you to do is instead of saying, I need to do more mobility. Why? Look at your why. What? What is it? the problem that you're trying to solve. Or if you think you don't have a problem, what is it you're trying to achieve? Okay, let's go. Yeah, and that's why when people wrote up on the AMA board and they asked me for mobility, I'm like, you're asking me the wrong question. Well, it's the right question in their head, but it's like, what do you mean by that? Exactly, yeah. Th that's what why I call it the wrong that? question. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the whole point there, is the better you get at asking the Asking better questions is better results you get. We, we see that in every aspect of our life. You know, you get smarter at your job. So now you know to ask this question or you know to ask this question. When you buy your second or third house, you know to ask this and this and this. Or you didn't know that the first time you bought a house. And conversely, if you don't know, that's why we ask you questions back. We are not trying <laughs> to challenge you. We are not trying to debate you. We literally are like, what do you mean by that? We want to help you. Let's get you the right question so we can get you the right answer. So it's, what is the problem? It's out of the utmost respect for you in your time. Absolutely. Like Robin and I do not want to waste anybody's time. And your feelings. Exactly. We see you guys in pain or just, I can't do what I want to do. And we're just like, how do we help you? Exactly. That's instantly all we want to do. Exactly. And it's always from that point or yes. reference. I don't know. Makes sense. <laughs> so <clears throat> when it comes to people who think they need more mobility, they're usually trying to solve three problems. Yeah, these are the most common ones we see. Yeah. They're either trying to get themselves out of pain. Yep. They're either trying to get themselves in a new position or greater range of motion. Mm -hmm. Or they're trying to um, recover or adapt from soreness. Yes. So those are kind of the three, three areas we see. Let's give a really easy example for each of them, maybe. Break it down. Okay. Cool. Um... What's so, the most common pain when you hear? Low back. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Low back. Low back pain. Okay. So do you want me to dive into that or do you want me to hold on a minute? Dive. Um, actually, I want to go back first. Never mind. So You asked me. I know I did. But I, 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 my moment it came out of my mouth, I thought about it and I went, oh, no, no, no. There's something else I need to All right. Cover. So someone's got their real problem. They're like, I need mobility because my back hurts. Exactly. So what do you say? Before I do that, you actually need to assess things. Okay. So that's the whole thing. Like, it, it actually helps you define the problem. Right. Now, would you lump all the pain and ability to get in position recovery all into going, let's go back to, to assess? Yes. Okay. Because it, if you're not assessing the problem or assessing what's going on, you might chase the wrong problem. Absolutely. I agree. It's like what you just said about challenges in alcohol. You were like, no, no, no. 
that's not my problem. It's over here. Yeah. <laughs> and so you keep chasing over here in this, this problem with the challenge and you're like, no, 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 I'm ignoring this thing that that's causing that thing. Yeah, exactly. So many, so often that's the problem that we get into in multiple aspects of life. Yeah. And this We're, is why you come to us. So, so do, do you want to talk about assessing the low back? Mm-hmm. Or just in not general? yet. Not okay. yet. Um, so first with assessment, get somebody else's eyes on you. Okay. Like seriously, seriously, my eyes, Robin's eyes, Steph's eyes, one of our other coaches' eyes, they all have eyes for this. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you might tell me I can't get into position or I have pain in position or I just want to feel better after the workout. And I might look at you and go, well, the reason you have those is because you don't know how to squat. (laughs) Your, Your movement pattern is wrong. Okay, well, instead of don't know how to squat, Let's let's just say something different. How about <laughs> um, your your hint, your squat is a got a little bit hinge of it yeah. in it, right? Yeah. Okay, so you guys all know how to squat, but it's like, yeah, we we see maybe you don't even feel it. In fact, I would guarantee nobody's trying to hinge their squat when they do it. They're mm-hmm. not trying to, but we see it, and we're like, Ugh. we can see it day one and go, you're gonna if you're not already, you're gonna start having low back problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So squat. Yeah. So that's, so you're assessing that their squat and you're like, that's a hingy squat. Yeah. Right. And, and it might just be, you've never thought about the movement pattern differently. Right. You might have all the strength, all the range of motion. Your muscles might be loose, feeling really good, but that motor pattern's off. And uh, honestly, if I'm not trying to talk down anyone, but if you don't know what we're talking about, it's where you reach back with your butt um, when you squat, like reaching back like a deadlift first Mm -hmm. and then you sit down and then you stand up. It's yeah. It's a hingy squat. And there's all sorts of other examples. I can talk about going overhead with that. I can talk about Mm pull-ups with that. I can talk last night's bench press with that. I can talk all of those things in where somebody will tell me it's this and they need to mobilize it. And I go, actually it's the way you move. Yeah. Like you push press a bunch and you're like, why does my back hurt? Cause you were hyper extending. Exactly. You don't need to stretch for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. So that's where, Once you can break down that assessment and actually get to the root cause, you can solve the problem. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm not just trying to put a band-aid on things. I'm trying to actually solve the fundamental problem. Absolutely. And I think that's what people want. I hope. Nobody wants a band-aid. I mean, sometimes, like you said, I want the magic pill. Some days you need the band-aid. Right. But not if you're (laughs) going to wake up the next day in pain. (laughs) Exactly. What's the point? Exactly. Well, and that's the whole thing is like, I want to get away from just giving you guys band-aids. I want to give you the tools to actually solve your problems. Okay, so are you ready to go to... Yep, so let's talk pain. Okay. So there's three aspects of pain. First, is it moving too much? Is the body part moving yep. too what much? what hurts, is it moving too much? Got it. Second, is it not moving enough? Okay. Third, is it weak? Oh, yeah. Okay. So when we think about pain, so let's go back to the low back. Yes. Um, you need to assess... When is it occurring? Yeah. So for me, I know when I get low back pain, I've sat for too long. Yeah. And it, and, and to be very clear, it most likely won't be happening during the event. Mm-hmm. It'll happen that night or the next day. Yep. So mm-hmm. keep, you've got to kind of keep track of the movements you're doing so you can kind of see if there's a pattern. Okay, go ahead. Yes. And oh, by the way, look at the bigger picture. If you tell me that you have pain from deadlifting, you better tell me that you didn't sit at a desk for eight hours. You better tell me that you got eight to nine, ten hours. You didn't get good amount of sleep, or you did get good amount of sleep, um, and also that you didn't stay static in something. Yeah. So or, look at the whole like the pattern of your whole day, not just what you do in the gym. Yeah. Because right. far more often it's one of those. Um, so with low back, it is moving too much, aka you're making the muscles of your low back work. So when like, you sit, a when lot. you sit, mm-hmm. that those muscles are on. Because mm-hmm. your hips and your butt are supported mm-hmm. by a chair. Got it. And so your back is curved and the muscles of that spine are supporting you there. Got it. If you feel it when you're deadlifting, it's because those muscles are moving. Yep. You're not using your glutes, your hamstrings, or your lats to stabilize there. Yep. Boom. That's going to cause you to have that yep. discomfort and pain. So um, that's kind of how it's moving too much and the other things are not working can cause pain. All right. When... We have it not moving. So this is like my knee hurts. Well, it's because my knee literally can't bend. 
right? So, or my knee is stuck and I haven't gotten it moving there. Yeah, that's going to hurt. That's going to feel not so great. It's been on a six hour flight mm -hmm. because my knees are in my chest because I didn't get the exit row or didn't bump to business class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm trying to work. Um, so boom, that's where my knee's going to hurt. It's weak. Um, and it might not actually be that piece that hurts is weak. It's something else is weak. Um, Go it, back to low back. Yeah. So low back, it's probably your butt and your hips that are weak. Not the actual muscles of your spine, nor your actual discs in your spine. Okay. And this is not to say that you are crazy because your discs so, show degeneration or you have a herniated disc or any of those things. Um, it's to tell you that if you have any of those things, yes, they can be surgically repaired. But in the process of rehabbing it, you're going to build up all the structures around it. And this is from somebody who is literally on disability for his low back. And nobody would ever guess. Yep. <laughs> so um, th th that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, you want to compare discs? I can show you the MRIs. <laughs> you will laugh. Um, but that's okay. Also, if your MRI showed degeneration, you're human. <laughs> Yes. I know it sounds really scary. Spondylolisthesis. That's the narrowing. I mean, we're all there. Sorry. That's just aging. So don't worry too much about these things. I get it. It's scary, but we can work around these diagnoses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ben just said, yeah. All right. <laughs> I live it. <laughs> you live it. Um, so let's talk about how changing the way you think about mobilizing will help that. Okay. So... For that pain, if you were to stretch your low back and it is moving too much or working too much, it's now going to hurt more. Yeah. Because guess what you're doing when you're stretching it? You're pulling and moving it more. Yeah. So what will happen then is it will either gain a range of motion that it's not strong in or stable in. So it will feel very uncomfortable. Or two, it will now be prioritized to continue to be used. Mm -hmm. So this is where like... Oh, my low back hurts. Well, okay. Now we need to not hold in positions around it. We need to build around it. Yeah. And keep it from moving. Um, maybe, and this is something that I've kind of seen, is, okay, maybe it's not moving enough. Right? And this is usually with other joints, but we'll go back to low back. Um, so maybe it is stuck and stiff in a position. So guess what? Get it out of that position and get it moving. And that's not going to be a static stretch. Because what are you doing when you're static? You're not moving. Yeah. Um, and that's the whole point when I think about that stuff. There. Last but certainly not least, it's weak. Most likely the thing that is causing pain and irritation is not where the weakness is. Yeah. Um, take your low back. That usually means your hips aren't strong. Your glutes aren't strong. So instead of them doing the work, the low back is doing the work. And so if we strengthen those other pieces, that will now feel better. Yep. Cool. Um, next, I think that covers most of the stuff for pain. For low back, yeah. And if you have a shoulder pain or blah, 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 it's very much the same assessment cycle. We're looking for, is it moving too much, not enough? Is it weak? Are the most, is, it, is this compensating for this? We can help you with that. Yep. Okay. Inability to get into position. So, I, I automatically go to... I don't know what you were thinking of. Well, I think of hand overhead. Oh, I like hand overhead. Okay. I also think of front rack, like Robin's yeah. talking. Um, I also think of ankles. Yeah. Those or, are my yeah. three. Yeah. Um, or pulling from the floor. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Pick one. Um, so let's go ability to get your hand overhead because you talk shoulder. Yeah. So this is where because you can't get your arms over your head properly without your back arching, without your body moving, basically you don't have shoulder flexion. Right. It is going to require you to increase the range of motion or function about that joint. Yes. So, yes, static stretching will help that. 100%. Here's the problem. It's going to take a long freaking time. Yes. And it is going to be very boring. Yes. So if you think two minutes after class is going to change that. Nope. Well, it will, but <laughs> I'll see you in 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, by the way, that means two minutes every day for 10 years. Yeah. 
It will work, but it's going to take that long. So flip it. Think of it this way. Wait a minute. What am I doing when I'm static stretching? I'm literally utilizing something to pull me into position. So think of yoga straps. Think of the the mobility bands that we use in the gym. Mm -hmm. The big purple bands. You're taking something and you're using it to pull it into position. Mm -hmm. Why not do that with weights? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You ever notice that banded good mornings really aren't that hard? Mm -hmm. That's why we tell you you can do like 100, 200 of them. Yeah. No problem. But if I told you to do 100, 200 deadlifts, you would throw the barbell at me? Yeah. Same idea. So now it's finding the right exercise. And I say exercise because it's going to look like a bodybuilding movement. It's going to look like a lifting movement. It's going to look different than just holding still. All right. So go back to arm overhead. Give an example. So arm overhead. Two things I love. Hanging. Yep. So literally the pull-up bar and gravity are making you work there. Yeah. And they're pulling that into position. Of course there's... And that's your body loading it. You Mm -hmm. don't even need to pick up a weight. Exactly. Yeah. Again, that's going to take a long time because you're going to need to hang for five minutes. Yes. And most of us don't want to hang for a minute. No. Yep. So there's that one. The next one I think of is plate pullovers or dumbbell pullovers. Okay. So that's where you're laying flat on an object, floor or bench. Your core is braced like a dead bug and you're holding on to something in your hands. Mm -hmm. And you're literally pulling your arms back and over your head to try and get it in position. Yeah, I like it. So without your elbows bending, without your um, wrists curling, without any compensation from a straight arm, you're pulling that weight over and you're bringing it back. So it'll look like an overhead press when you're at the overhead position. Preferably, yes. Yeah. A lot of people who struggle with this cannot even get there. Yeah, that's okay. I'm one of them. Like I have really mobile shoulders, but my core and the muscles that attach my core to my shoulders don't work as well sometimes Got it. so I have to pull them into it um, and that is literally like loading that joint to go oh okay I can go here I can go here oh by the way now you're strong in that joint mm-hmm. so that joint can resist more problems so when you get into trouble there it'll help you okay um, next we have with the shoulder is an opposite of what you do regularly. So if you normally do a bunch of pushing, you need to do some pulling and vice versa. That's where the strength balance stuff comes into. Okay. So lots of little areas there to go through. All right. Recovery. This is what we want your brain to go from fight or flight to rest and digest. So we need your brain to calm down Mm -hmm. and we need your brain to relax. And we need your brain to tell the muscles and the joints that, hey, we're safe. We're okay. You can start to adapt and rebuild. So um, there's no, with this, this is where static stretching is a banger of an option. Because guess what you're doing? You're laying, you're breathing, you're relaxing. It's why yoga is so regenerative sometimes, right? And all of that. Um, And it's really important because that's what can fix your brain and your body to feel better for mobility. And it kind of speeds up the process as opposed to just sitting and breathing, getting into a stretch is going to speed that, that process from calming you down from fight and flight to let's go. Well, it's a double bang for your buck Yeah. because you're sitting and breathing, Yeah. but also now you're increasing the range of motion yep. that that joint or that muscle is in. And you're going to be much more successful getting into longer ranges of motion when you're warm, sweaty, your brain's engaged and warmed up and yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's good. Love it. So that's where it can start to recover for you, which will generate better for you. So I'm not trying to rush you because I just bought myself five or 10 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to kind of circle back and we're talking about this. Um, when we talk about these focuses, we like to give you a little bit of guidance. So what I'm hearing is in, in between classes at home, open gym before class we're looking to maybe do some more stability work some more loading um the hangs the uh overhead uh what the plate overheads that kind of stuff um we can give you specifics to your issue and then after class is when you want to get into those kind of more static stretches while you're pulling down yep i mean i'm oversimplifying as usual i'm gonna simplify it even more okay do it change your state Change your state. So 
if you're coming into the gym, yes. you've been passive all day. Yes. You haven't been moving, mm -hmm. most likely. You've been moving, but it's been less. So what you need to do to become more mobile is start moving. Got it. Is start pulling, start stretching, all of that stuff. And and I use the term pulling and stretching kind of like I'm literally using load, using force to pull you into position. Yep. Um, if you're sitting at your desk and you can't go to the gym, you got two minutes, that's where the stretches, mobility can kind of help you there because you can counter the position of being rounded and sitting at your desk. Mm -hmm. You can move through that. Um, your post class, what have you been doing the entire class? Moving. Right. So do the opposite in that. If you think about it in those terms and those patterns, boom. All right. So regardless of where you've, you have a problem, let's say you just don't even know where to start. Top three things you have 10 minutes before class. What would you say to get moving? Give us some tools in our toolbox. Um, I'm going to give you one for each of them. Okay. Shoulders. A hang or a pullover pass-through. Okay. Wrists. A rock back and forth pulling your shoulder past your wrist. When you're, you're kind of kneeling on the ground? Yep. Hands yeah. and knees. Or it can be on a box. Yeah. Um, something like that. Or it can be with a dumbbell with wrist and flexion curls. All oh, right. Okay. Yep. Wrist curls. Wrist curls. Um, let's go elbow. Go back to the shoulder. Because mm -hmm. most likely all of us can open your elbows. If you can't open your elbows, do some bicep curls. Love bicep curls. <laughs> um, okay. Low back. Dead bugs. Hip 90-90s. Your 90-90s. And glute bridges. Yep. Those three. Oh, by the way, those also work for your hips. Mm -hmm. If your hips are still tight and you've already done those three, um, standing knee hugs. Mm. or hip airplanes. Yeah. All of those are creating strength around that joint. Love it. Um, in there. Knees. Go back up to the hips or go down to the ankles. If your knee is still giving you problem, figure out how much it can open, how much it can close. So that might be a knee hug. That might be a hamstring floss. That might be um, a banded curl or a banded extension. Um, ankles, push your knee past your toes with your femur in line, okay. AKA don't let your hips move, let your ankle move. Right. Um, and that can be with a bandage distraction. That can be with a weight that can be with a split squat, all sorts of things. Cool. The other thing I want to talk about here, because a lot of people will tell me that the static stretch is the answer for them. And I want to go back to that thing where we use a band to help us static stretch. There's the silly split machine in the back where it's literally applying force to pull you into position. Mm -hmm. Pilates class, reformer machines pull you into positions to mm -hmm. make you more flexible. Have you ever noticed that's the same thing when you do an RDL back down? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or as Robin learned this week, oh, wow, when Ben makes me do stupidly low goblet squats... It's the same thing for my hips and pulling them into position. That's the point. Yep. So next time you're like, Ben, I just want to stretch and hold here. Use some load to assist it. Yeah. Because that's going to signal to your brain to let one, that tissue is safe Two, it's like, Oh, we can go there. Let's be strong there. Yeah. Cause your body wants to be, that's the beauty of your body. It's like, Oh, I have access to that. I'm going to use it and I'm going to make sure I'm safe there. Yeah. And that's why we do hamstring flosses. That's why we do all sorts of stuff to signal to your brain. Boom. There. And while we don't want to chase pain, we're probably going to have to feel pain. Like it's not going to be comfortable. If it is, it's a recovery, calm down, relaxing thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing that before class... You're in big trouble, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest. Um, so think about that. Another thing, and this is when to use the foam roller appropriately. Okay. And Robin's reasoning for this is the best reasoning I've ever heard. <laughs> ben, this is the only way to wrap my brain around doing what I'm about to go do. 
Yeah. Well, those are the, yeah, the days when I'm just like, I don't want to do anything right now. I just want to sit here. Just go lay on the foam roller. Start there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what that signifies to your brain is it applies more pressure to the tissue. The brain goes, oh my God, this doesn't feel good. <laughs> right? And then yeah. you get up and you're like, the brain goes, oh, that's done. Well, okay, I'll go move and do other things so I don't have to do that again. Yeah. And literally blood is moving through your body instead of just sitting there. Yeah. That, that's what I like the foam roller yeah. for. So if you're doing it for that mental aspect, you're using the foam roller in the right way. If you're telling me that it's fundamentally changing your tissue, you and I are going to go watch a surgery and wonder why there are no foam rollers in the operating room. <laughs> well, I would say not change, but maybe more like a prepare. Exactly. Like that very first step. Let's just, yeah, change the mind. Get the body ready to go. It's a nice little prepar preparatory. And then, this, and then the same on the back end. Like Ben, ben said, if, you're, if you've been sitting still, this will start you moving. If you've been moving, this will calm you down to where you're sitting still. Exactly. So it's those transitions. That's when I would use the foam roller. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, if you want to make fundamental change in range of motion, pain, all the things we just talked about, not the best choice. Yep. And oh, by the way, I've seen this in the gym for 20 years, and I know a bunch of other coaches have too. There's a new study out, and if you want me to find it for you, I will, that literally proves that loading movements creates a greater change in range of motion than stretching. So it's a study, and they did an additional meta-analysis. So they looked at a bunch of studies, and they came to the same conclusion twice. So you're saying we're not just talking out our buttholes? I... I'm saying for those of you who want me to be evidence-based, there's your evidence. Yeah. For those of you who are like, no, I want to know your experience, come with me and I'll show you people. Yeah, um, we, we, we do make sure our chit-chats are science-based on some level. On some level. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's why, like, all of that. And I don't want to negate the brain because the brain is tied in and they're actually finding this out that muscles might have... I don't... For lack of terms, because I don't fully understand it, muscles might have brains. Yeah. <laughs> the, no, that's a really good uh, analogy. I like that. Like the tissue of the muscle, something in there has sensors and thinks like your brain does. And they're really coming to this with some new studies and, and research. And I'm like, cool. I'm like, oh. Yes. So my head starts to hurt really, really it's bad. It's that little emoji where the... Time. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it makes total sense. And I'm like, oh, I've seen that everywhere. Yeah, you it's, we see it all the time. Well, it's why when people go, what makes an athlete? I'm like, the person who can pick it up in two two reps. Yeah. Because their their brain and their muscle is just that smart. I hate those people. I know. Me too. <laughs> Only because I'm jealous that they get to play a game and make millions of dollars. And do really well at it, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, so, any wrap-up thoughts? February? February. What's the problem? Find the problem, <laughs> assess the problem, and then find something you can do daily for it. Go listen to that podcast last year because we give you a lot of daily options. The other thing is change your state. So if you're stuck at your desk, do something to move. If you're stuck in a standing desk, sit down, stretch. If you're stuck at a sitting desk, stand up. Get to the gym and change your tissue. If you change your tissue, your range of motion will change, your feelings will change, your body will feel better. Yeah. Promise. Um, at the gym, strengthen and lengthen tissue through loading. Yep. And oh, by the way, this is going to take work. Yeah. This isn't the fun stuff, but it makes you ready to do fun stuff. But I'll be honest. I would much rather do three sets of 10 heavy RDLs than have you have me sit up against the wall for an hour True. with my legs up. For sure. I will pull my hair out. <laughs> I don't care what, okay, what TV show. So that's what I'm trying to tell you all right. is sometimes the fun thing is actually the thing to work. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think I gave, oh, last but not least for your mobility, post-class, sit on the floor and breathe. Yeah. That'll, you'll figure out what to stretch when you're sitting on the floor and breathing. Yeah. Check in it, with yourself. It'll scream at you. Yeah. So those are kind of my things. At your desk, change your state. At the gym, Change the tissue. Change your state. Change your state. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, after the workout, um, breathe. Yeah. Which will also change your state. Yeah. Change it. I like it. I think that covers everything. Yeah. Oh, and of course, as always, great opportunity to check in with your coach. 
sign up for that private training check-in and we can talk about this stuff custom to you. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you come up to me in class and ask me for this stuff, yes, I will give you an answer. But you're really being selfish to the other people around you. <laughs> and also to yourself because if you really want to do this, you, you do need to practice it under the gaze of a coach. So you don't want to be doing something you think is helping you and you're actually not helping yourself because something's off. So you do want to do this one-on-one -on -one with your coach. And no, we can't do it before or after class typically because we have other things to do. So yeah, schedule those check-ins. Great opportunity. We can spend an hour easily on this stuff. Easily. Or we could combine it with something else. I don't know how many whiteboards I have one written up for folks, emailed to folks, or still in my head for folks with this problem in mind. Yeah. And it gives you all the homework in the world. And yeah, it gives you something to do. So... All right, cool. Oh, we should shout out a couple of people that are already doing this. Diane. So Diane's a great case. <laughs> Diane has changed jobs and is in a calmer role. She's no longer working three jobs. She's working one job. Oh, wow. Good job, Diane. So Diane Martinez comes into the gym, and she does a very long stretching and mobility program. And when her and I talked about it, because I was, like, against it, yeah. knowing typical Ben, not my method, I don't get it. Opened my aperture a little bit to that. And I talked to her about it and she goes, no, Ben, I need this hour to just decompress from life. And this is the best way and it makes me feel better. And I went, duh, that's <laughs> perfect because you have the hour to use. Yeah. I'm always thinking nobody has an hour to do this stuff like Diane does there. But guess what? Then she told me, but yes, you need to help me strengthen these positions that I'm now able to get mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. And it's a little off because I'm like, well, no, we're actually... Yeah, never mind. We're mobilizing into those positions. But she's one of the best ones at that. Kristen, uh, KG. Um, yeah, so I don't know. In the evening, just people come to Open Gym to do their, I don't know. Who, there, there's, there's just like doing shout outs. There's a bunch. <laughs> like, um, I'll give Andrew. Uh, Joshua uh, in the morning, he comes in early because you told him to. Well, I told him he <laughs> needs to fix his ankles yeah. and it's helped him. Um, uh, Andrew K, Kidranga. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew, if I said that wrong. He's trying really hard in his busy schedule to spend time after class opening his shoulders. Good job, Andrew K. So, and he knows it. He's like, this is my, but he's also doing a really good job working with me and the other coaches in class of going, hey, I need to modify this because I can't get in the right position. Good job. I don't know. Every, any client who ever has elevated a deadlift, pat yourself on the back. Yes. Because you're actually building the range of motion there you don't realize. And it. you put your ego on the shelf. Good job. And you can load the shit out of it, too. I know. It's fun. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's there. Um, there's some newbies that are starting to learn that, oh, the barbell squat's not for me. The goblet squat's for me. Yeah. And they're coming along. So when you start seeing people's goblet squatting in class, know they actually might be doing more than you're doing with yeah. the back squat. Give them a shout out. Yeah. So. Well, cool. good job. If we miss anyone, we'll, we'll catch you or just come up and smack us. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Good. Good podcast. I like this one. Thank you. I've been thinking about this for a long time, so I'm really happy we did this. Yes. All right. Well, I'll let Robin go cut her hairs. <laughs> so thank you all. Have a wonderful day, and bye-bye for now.